G'day Starlo here again. A week or so ago I came down onto this stretch of rocky coast at the mouth of my local estuary and made a YouTube clip targeting brim but I ended up catching more flathead than brim. I didn't catch a lot of fish and I didn't set the world on fire but it's been an incredibly popular clip. You can watch it up here if you like. So I thought I'd come back down and have another crack and this time actually target something to eat. So I've bought the trusty old Bunnings bucket and my Fury knife and I'm hoping to catch a couple of flathead to take home for dinner tonight. It is midday at the moment. It's a bright sunny beautiful day unlike the other day when i was fishing here i haven't got the breeze in my face yet <laughs> you'd look at it and say it's probably too good a conditions to catch fish but we'll give it a crack it's low tide right now out in the ocean but this water is still pouring out of here and i know from experience that it will run out for at least another couple of hours before the estuary and the ocean reach equilibrium and the new tide starts to push in so I'm going to fish the very last of this run out here in the estuary. I've uh, got a little squidgy fish on. That'll do for starters. See what happens. Let's see if I can catch dinner. First though, I'm going to need a quick change of footwear. Swapping out of my Crocs and into some serious rubber wetsuit booties. These have tough hard wearing soles, complete with metal spikes. And they're exactly what you need for walking on the rough, oyster-encrusted rocks in this part of the lower estuary zone. With my rock-hopping booties on, I wade into the shallows and begin casting my little soft plastic up and across the current. <laughs> Through my Mako Sunnies, I can actually see a couple of small brim working along the edge of the drop-off here. They're not overly big, but it's a good sign. Plenty of toadfish here too, and um, some small bait fish. I've just waded out a little bit so that I can get over these rocks and fish onto the sand because there seemed to be a few flathead here the other day and I'm hoping there might be some bigger ones. Mm, these little bait fish are a good sign. They're looking a bit nervous too. I've got a very light jig head on at the moment. I may change up to a bigger one, seeing I'm actually targeting the flathead today. I like the slow sink rate of a smaller jig head when I'm chasing brim, but it's much less critical when you're after the flatties, and there's a lot to be said for being down on the bottom. There's a little bit of swell rolling in here. It's quite a large swell out to sea today. It's probably about a 1.5 metre swell, and uh, it's starting to push in now that the tide has actually turned out at sea and is rising even though it's still running out hard here as I explained. Ooh, and I'm getting a bit of surge which means I'm getting my shorts wet. But the water is beautiful and it's such a lovely day. I don't really mind. I got my first flatty the other day on the, on the crank of crab so I may even give that another go today if I don't do any good on the little squidgy fish. I'm just going to take my time work my way up along the rocks here fishing all the little sandy patches in the hope of finding a hungry flathead. There's so many different ways to work a soft plastic. Basically what I'm doing with this one is getting it out there, making absolutely sure that I get it down to the bottom. It's probably about two, two and a half meters out where I threw. It'd be well and truly on the bottom by now. Make contact with it. Give the rod tip a couple of flicks just to make it bounce and swim up off the bottom and swim back down again and just keep repeating that and mix it up try different things you know, and try a little little bit of straight retrieve then stop again get it back down on the bottom you really need to experiment and find out what the fish want on the day and then once you start getting a few hits doing something obviously you keep doing that there's no great science to it <laughs> It's more about working out just what's the most productive approach on the day. The thing you've got to remind yourself with plastics though is that they're fishing for you all the time. Even when they're just sitting on the bottom or drifting along with the tide or sinking through the water column, they get eaten during every stage of that retrieve. So the whole time you've got a lure in the water, you're in the running to catch a fish. That's one of the things I love about soft plastics and one of the reasons I have so much confidence in them. Oh, there's one. What have we got? Right on the edge between the, huh, the rocks and the sand. Hmm, it's a flatty, it's what I'm after, but I don't think it's legal. It'd be close, but 
I'm not really into close. I'd rather get them 40 centimeters and over. You get a much better meal out of them too. Put this one back and give him a chance to do some more growing. I was going to change this lure, but I was walking around the rocks here and thought, oh, I'll just give it a couple more flicks. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if there's any more. I'll just check that leader. Oh, it's got a rub. I'm going to uh, fix that. And I'm also, I am going to upsize a little bit and go for a slightly heavier head. I've opted for a simple round headed jig with a fairly fine gauge hook and I'm matching it with the next size up of squidgy fish. But far more important than the exact lure choice is rigging it right. Getting it on the hook absolutely straight so it's not bent or twisted. This makes a huge difference to your strike rate. Yep, that'll work. Right, so I've roughly doubled the weight of my jig head from two or three grams to about four or five. Still a very small head and I've slightly increased the size of the plastic and of course I've rubbed a bit of s factor on it. Let's see how we go. This will get down quicker and stay closer to the bottom more easily, which could be just the ticket for a flathead. And it also means that I could get snagged. I just did, but I managed to bounce it off. All right, there's a bit of rock out there, a bit wider than I thought. Now, when you've been snagged like that, check your leader, just to make sure there's no little chafes or rubs on it from the rocks or whatever's growing on them. A Little bit wider, hopefully out onto the sand. Get it to the bottom, make contact and start bouncing it along with that run out tide. This is really staying down well by going to that slightly heavier jig head. It's a fine line between being in too close and getting hung up on the rocks and being out too wide where there really aren't any fish. They're right on that edge. Which makes sense. It's where the food is, it gives them a little bit of a break from the current. Right, I'll have one more cast here and then I'll keep going where I was headed, which is up to this next little bit of a rocky beach and fish that sandy patch out there. Hmm, current really got that one. And I got snagged. Now, when you get snagged on rocky stuff, sometimes you can twang it off. Get your line and just twang it. It's hard though when there's a lot of current on the belly of line. It doesn't work quite as well. Nope, I don't think it's gonna work today. But it's a good little trick. Always worth trying. All right, to break a snag off, I'm just gonna point the rod straight down the line, grab the spool of the reel, and just pull back steadily until something breaks. All right, re-rig time. All right, I've re-rigged. I upgraded my leader while I was at it. I went to up to 16 pound OCA fluorocarbon. That's uh, heavier than I'd choose if I was targeting brim. I'm really targeting flathead today and I reckon it might just give me, oh, I just spooked a flathead out of here. Can't believe it, it was right up in close. Just goes to show, you should really work a lure before you wade in. All right, he might not have gone too far. Let's see if he's sitting out there on the edge. He looked like a keeper too. I've put the heavier jig head on again and I've gone to that old faithful 100 mil squidgy wriggler in bloodworm. <laughs> if it ain't broke, I'm just gonna wade out here a little bit so I can fish over the rocks without getting constantly hung up. And I'm dropping it out there on the current break between the really fast water and the slightly slower stuff and onto a sandy bottom. It just looks like the perfect ambush spot for a, a decent flathead to me.
Oh, that was a hit. That was a hit. When you get a strike, it makes sense to drop your lure back into the same spot next cast. You never know. Oh, yes, got him. Ooh. Well, that's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. Oh, this might be my dinner. Oh, he's getting very close to those rocks down there. This is a pretty good fish. You know, this is just crazy. I came down the other day to target decent brim and all I could catch was flathead. Today, I'm deliberately targeting flathead and guess what I've got? A really nice brim. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> this is a funny old game, fishing. It's not a bad fish at all. I thought it was just behaving a bit erratically for a, uh, a flatty and going towards the rocks a bit too much. Look at that, that's a nice brim. How good does it look in this water? Now a lot of people would take that home and happily eat it and I would some days too but I'm going to let it go because I'm reasonably confident that I'm going to get a flathead and I do prefer flathead to eat. I also think they're a lot more sustainable being faster growing than brim, but there'd be nothing wrong with keeping a brim like that. And they're lovely and clean down in this part of the world, down near the mouth of the system. Beautiful fish. An old 100 mil squidgy wriggler in bloodworm. I don't think there's ever been a better brim lure made in the history of fishing, seriously. How many brim have been caught on that lure? Not this particular one, but that tail. Oh, he's got tough lips. There we go. Mate, it's your lucky day. A lot of people will be very happy to keep you. Uh, all right. Flathead, please. Come on, Huey. Send me a flatty for dinner. Each time I cast, I'm trying to land in just a slightly different spot so that I'm covering a different strip of water on each retrieve. You see I'm giving the plastic quite violent little flicks. I find that works really well sometimes on flathead. I tend to be a bit more subtle when I'm chasing brim, but I don't mind giving it a bit more action when, uh, when flathead are on the menu. I hope they're on the menu. All right. Oh, a little brim just chased that up. Slight change of location. I'll move up here about another 30 or 40 metres. I really like to stay mobile and cover water when I'm doing this style of fishing, which is where that Shimano backpack comes in so handy. I can park my bucket somewhere close by and then traverse some shoreline in search of fish. Got him, first cast in this new spot. <laughs> Nothing like a change of locations. What is this? Oh, it's a tailor. Oh, gee whiz, a big brim followed him up too. It's a bit of life here. It really is good. Now don't you bite me off. Little chopper tailor. Wonder what condition my tail is going to be in. He's biting on it. Oh, I might have got it back. Yep, that looks fine. It's a little bit chopped up. <laughs> oh, and so is my leader. Look at that. Tail a chop. I'm going to retie that. It's really worth checking and retying your leader regularly. You just never know when that better fish might come along. And remember, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Oh, 
Oh, that was a savage hit. Oh, I wonder what that was. Felt a bit brim-like again. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, he's pantsed me. That's what we call that, having your pants pulled down. Pulled the plastic down into the bend of the hook. And this is going to be so funny if this flathead catching mission turns into a brim session. Now again, I'm just fanning them around a little bit, moving each cast a little bit more to the left, a little bit more down current, just so that I'm coming in on a different avenue, covering different water. Hmm, it's the odd rock out there. Oh, I'll try the twang again. Oop, yep, it worked this time. fish chase that up, I don't know what they were. They looked like whiting. Alright, check the leader. Yep, there's a nick there. Retie. Sure, it takes time to frequently retie your leader to lure connection, but seriously, it's worth it. Oh yeah, that's a fish. Oh I dropped him. That was a flatty. Yep, good fish. That whack pattern. <laughs> Next cast after I drop one, I just put it back in the same spot. It's a flathead and it might be dinner. No, it's still not quite. Gee, there's a lot of these ones that are just legal down here. I know I could keep three or four of them and get a meal, but I just want one nice one. One about 45 would be really good. The old thumb on bum grip is working. Look at those spines. Don't worry, I've been spiked plenty of times. All right, I'm gonna move forward so that when he drops, he's gonna go straight in the water. Which he did. See if there's any more up there. They often lie in little groups and hopefully there's a bigger one amongst them. This is too much fun in the middle of a bright sunny day. It's just great. But it's also inevitable that you'll get snagged up from time to time in this sort of rocky terrain. And sure enough, I'm going to try the twang again. I can't tell you how many lures this little trick has saved me over the years, but it's important to get it right. Really stretch the line, then let it twang loose. Hey, it worked. The other thing to watch for is loose loops of line on your spool, especially when using braid. Left unattended, these can cause monumental tangles. As soon as you find a loop, rip your lure in and cast it out as far as you can. If that doesn't clear the loop, pull more line off until you reach it. Then, and this is really important, pinch the slack line between your fingertips and tension it until you come tight to the lure again. And suddenly, you're back in the game. Disaster averted and ready for that next hookup. Yes, got him. Ooh, a little bit of weight. What do we got? Feels very flathead like. Ooh. Oh, big head shakes.
<laughs> it's dinner. I gotta land it yet. But this is the one I wanted. Something in the 40s. Oh, you can just tell as soon as you lift into them, there's a lot more weight there. <laughs> but don't count your chickens until they're hatched or your flathead till they're safely on the shore. And I can't see the lure, which is not a good thing. It means he's swallowed it down. Hopefully the 16 pound leader will keep me out of trouble. I'll just back the drag off a tiny bit now. Not a great spot to land him here. Oh no, I actually can see the jig head, so I might not be in as much strife as I thought I was. Swim him up in here. the oyster covered rocks. She whiz. He's giving me some. Flathead don't fight, right? That's what people reckon. Huh. I think they're pretty good fish. Swimming up onto there. And there is my dinner. That one's going in the bucket. But I'll kill it first. <laughs> uh, it's about a uh, oh, probably 42, 43 centimetre dusky flathead. My absolute favourite eating size. And because I'm going to kill him, I don't mind grabbing this one in the gills. Nice safe way to grab them if you're going to keep them. There we go. Look at that. Hmm. Going to dine in style tonight. That'll feed me. I need to catch one for Joe now. Alright, I'll kill this fish straight away. I haven't got my icky spike with me, but you can use a knife to do the same thing. And the spot on a flathead is basically an equilateral triangle, go across between the eyes and back the same distance. If you go straight in there, you hit the brain and kill them. As I've explained before, you don't have to cut right through the throat latch to bleed a fish, you can just cut some gill arches or break them, but it's easier to do it this way on this fella. Bend the head back a little bit, break the spine, and we'll bleed out really well. Do you know what, I'm going to take it one step further and just gut him while we're at it. quicker you can get the guts out, the better fish eat. Also gives you a chance to have a look and see if there's anything interesting in their stomach. Looks like it's pretty empty. It's a female, immature row, next year's row. And nothing in the stomach. She was hungry. Get that back in the water for the fish to eat. Toadfish will take care of that pretty quickly. There's a lot of toads here in the shallows. Get the gills out as well as the guts. Look how clean that is. Give it a good wash in the salt water. And that can go straight in my bucket. You beauty. It's almost home time for me, but just before I leave, I want to try one last thing. I've moved right down to the actual entrance of the estuary on the bottom of the tide and tied on a cranker crab. I can't pass up the chance for one more shot at a decent brim. These crankers are like lollies to brim and this is the perfect terrain for fishing with one. I'm going to lob it in tight behind that rocky lump in the current. I reckon any crabs swept off here by the tide will be easy pickings for brim holding in the eddy behind the rock. Let's see if I'm right. It's certainly an obvious ambush point. Oh. Got him. Oh, on the cranker. Mm, I thought I'd just put it on on spec. I got it on the stupidest little short leader. 
I got really lazy and I'd broken my leader off and um, rather than retie it, I just tied it onto inches long leader. What have we got? I don't know how I'm going to land it here. I might have to walk it to the beach if it's anything decent, and it certainly feels like it is. Oh, I think it's a good brim. Oh, it's a lovely brim on the cranker. Where am I going to land him? Probably should have thought about that beforehand, shouldn't I? I hope you can see him down there in case I don't get him. It's quite a nice brim. This is what I was looking for the other day. And uh, I could only find small ones. Look, he's not a monster, but he's a pretty good elephant brim. I could wash him up in there, but then I've got to get down there and get wet. I think I'll go this way. Staying calm and having a game plan when you hook a decent fish is so important. Just take your time. Now these rocks are very wet, which tends to mean there's waves coming over them. Not dangerous here, but I might get wet. <sighs> the old cranker. Oh, he's only just hooked too. There we go. See if I can slide him up. Pretty nice brim for the middle of the day. Uh, well, it'd be pretty good to eat from down here. I think that might be the second part of dinner. Joe and I can have a flathead and a brim fillet each. Be a good comparison, actually. I think I know which one I'll like better, but anyway. As with any fish I plan to keep these days, I brain spike and bleed the brim immediately. And because I'm about to head home, I'll also gut and gill it right away. Treating your catch with respect should be a priority for every thinking angler. Well, I didn't exactly set the world on fire, but I've got a keeper flathead and a keeper brim, and that'll feed Joe and I tonight. And what a pleasant way to spend a couple of hours in the middle of a beautiful autumn day. You don't always have to get up at the crack of dawn or stay out into the darkness of night to catch fish. If you get the chance to do it and the conditions look right, just go fishing. Maybe you'll catch some, maybe you won't. That's what it's all about. Anyway, until next time, this is Starlo wishing you tight lines. If you enjoyed this video and learned something from it, let me know. Make a comment, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. You can also help me to produce more content by shouting me a beer or a coffee. I'll put the link for how you can do that in the comments below. And I'll catch you on the next time.